The title of today's message is The Day Grandpa Ran Down the Roof. And the purpose of this message is to emphasize the importance of personal responsibility. I'd like to turn to Ecclesiastes 9.11, if you would with me. I'm going to refer to this verse here at the beginning and then later on. In Ecclesiastes 9.11, and it may, uh, you may recollect these words, uh, starting in verse 11, I returned and I saw unto the sun that the race is not, and I'll impute here the word always, is not always to the swift, nor the battle always to the strong, nor bread always to the wise, nor riches always to men of understanding, nor favor always to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. So we're going to take a look at time and chance today. Of course, some of us, uh, in fact, many of us probably remember our grandparents. I was fortunate to grow up with my paternal grandparents living nearby. The farmhouse that I grew up in was built in the late 1870s. My great-grandfather homesteaded a farm on the Minnesota Prairie. My grandfather was born in that house. My father was born in that house. And when my parents got married, they lived on that family farm, and my grandparents moved to town about eight miles away. My parents had four boys in five years, and we all were raised on that farm. And although my grandfather had officially retired, no one would actually really notice that because he continued to come out to the farm every day and work like he always did. And as a result, we grandsons got to know Grandpa pretty well. And over the years, we, uh, living on the farm, we maintained a number of farm buildings. We reshingled those buildings, and this involved tearing off the old shingles and laying down tar paper and installing the new uh, asphalt three-tab shingles. My older brother was 14, and I was 12. At the time, Dad said it was time to reshingle part of the house. So the entryway and the utility room section of the house was sort of a lean-to on the side of the house, and that house apparently had not been re-roofed in about 50 years. It was about seven feet high on the low part and sloped up gently uh, to meet the main part of the house. Well, the first part, of course, was to tear off the old shingles, the old wooden cedar shingles, and toss or slide them down the roof and into a large wagon that my father had placed just below the edge of the roof. It was a hot and sweaty job. And my dad and my brother and I had to complete it in one day. We had to start and finish the job because, it, of course, it might rain overnight. Well, after tearing off the shingles, sliding them down the roof and into the wagon, we replaced a few roof boards and then rolled out the tar paper and began to nail in the new asphalt shingles. We had about half the roof re-shingled when it was late in the afternoon. My dad announced it was time he had to leave to start the evening livestock chores. You see, we lived on a dairy farm, and all the feeding and milking chores had to be done on a specific schedule. When my dad left to start the livestock chores, my brother and I were assigned to continue nailing the new shingles in place with Grandpa to supervise. At this point, let me say that Grandpa had not been on the roof during the day doing any of the roofing work. He had just come in from the field with tractor work. So when Dad went to the barn to do livestock chores at 4 p.m., we boys were left under Grandpa's supervision. Now, my brother and I were busy hammering shingles when Grandpa climbed up the ancient wooden ladder to inspect our work. I say the wooden ladder was ancient because I think it was old when Grandpa was a boy. The roof was slanted. It was difficult to walk on, so one had to be quite careful to maintain balance. And Grandpa dutifully came up and inspected our work and turned to leave, and he started to walk down the roof. At this point, I feel compelled to interrupt the narrative and mention that Grandma was an exceptionally good cook. She believed in quality and quantity, and Grandpa fully enjoyed Grandma's culinary skills. And accordingly, over the years, Grandpa had carried some extra weight. So when walking down the roof, Grandpa's steps came a little faster than he had anticipated. And then without notice, his pace picked up quickly, and he tried to slow his speed as he was walking down the roof, but in two quick strides, Grandpa couldn't stop himself, and he was actually running down the roof. A terrible disaster was unfolding right before our eyes. When Grandpa ran off the roof, he landed on his knees on the far side of the wagon box that was half filled with those old cedar shingles. The used cedar shingles that were torn off the roof had been tossed into that box haphazardly, and those shingles actually absorbed much of the shock when Grandpa landed on his knees. However, Grandpa had a fair amount of forward momentum, and that propelled his body full force up against the side of the wagon box. 
And as time and chance would have it, remember we're reading in, in Ecclesiastes 9.11 about time and chance happened to all. As time and chance would have it, the edge of the wagon box was the exact same height as Grandpa's hips. And so uh, the top edge of the wagon box then acted as a fulcrum against Grandpa's hips. And the force of his momentum caused him, that caused him to bring him to that point, caused him to flip headfirst over the edge of the box. And he disappeared from our view. Well, my brother and I scurried across the roof, down to the old ladder, climbing down the old ladder, and we feared a tragic outcome. I'm not sure what my brother thought, but I had visions of Grandpa mangled and dead. You see, there was only a three to four feet between the wagon box and the next building, which was an old coal and wood storage shed. We hurried around the trailer over to Grandpa, and there he was, just sitting on the ground, gasping for breath. I was sure he would have lacerations, broken bones, perhaps internal injuries. And if he was really lucky, I thought in the seconds that it took to get there, he might live long enough for the ambulance to arrive to haul him off to the hospital. However, there he was, having perfectly executed uh, a knee-first dive into the wagon box and, a, and an outstanding flip over the edge of the wagon box, avoided all obstacles and landed on his butt on the ground. I remember asking the age-old question, Grandpa, are you all right? Silly question, of course. Grandpa slowly replied, uh, let me catch my breath. I got the wind knocked out of me. Amazing. Other than being out of breath, Grandpa appeared to be okay. My brother and I ran and got Dad and told him that Grandpa ran down the roof and crashed to the ground. It was all very exciting for a while. And, that, and now normally Grandpa would work on the farm all day. We'd go home at 5 o'clock. And then he would go home and have supper with Grandma at 5.30. And in a huge understatement, my dad said that Grandpa was going home early today. He was a bit sore. Well, <clears throat> the real life story could have turned out tragically had it resulted in injury or death of Grandfather. And of course, we read that, and that time and chance will happen to all. But is everything just time and chance? Or is there a greater principle playing out. Let's turn to Proverbs 22 and verse 3. In Proverbs 22 and verse 3, a prudent man foresees evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Well, in Proverbs, in that verse, in Proverbs 22, 3, we read that a prudent man foresees evil or avo and avoids the problem. My grandfather was generally a very careful man. His brother died as a result of a farm accident on the same farm. And his father, my great-grandfather, purchased the homestead redemption rights from the widow of the original homesteader because he was killed in an accident on that same farm. Consequently, everyone in the family knew that safety at all times was a high priority. But other than the day that Grandpa ran down the roof, I never knew Grandfather to ever have any other type of accident on the farm. He reinforced safety lessons at every turn. Yet only one small mistake nearly cost him his life. As we read then in Ecclesiastes 9.11, time and chance do happen to all. And although Grandfather practiced the principle of prevention that was outlined in Proverbs 22.3, a momentary decision choosing to turn and step in the wrong direction was nearly fatal. Interestingly, Grandpa took personal responsibility for the near-fatal accident when he explained the reason that he ran down the roof. Bearing in mind that English was his second language, he simply said, I let my weight get ahead of me. He, had, he didn't blame my dad for leaving him to supervise a couple of teens on the roof. He didn't blame us boys for somehow distracting him. He didn't blame the slant of the roof. He didn't blame Grandma for feeding him too well. He didn't come up with an excuse that he was a victim of fate. He simply took personal responsibility for what had happened. The principle of personal responsibility for our own decisions is reinforced in Proverbs 14, verse 15. In Proverbs 14, verse 15, the simple believes every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. I believe in the King James, this is the New King James, in the King James it says, uh, uh, looks well to his going. Well, a wise or a prudent person is a careful person, not believing everything in face, at face value, what they hear or see. And the re reference to steps in Proverbs 14.15 is the direction in the, which we are going. I have a cousin who's about 10 years younger than I am. And growing up, he was always getting into trouble. 
After high school, he got into car accidents. He had minor brushes with the law. He was suckered by con artists whom he, who pretended to be his friend, and, and he believed them. He lost money, he lost cars, he lost jobs. And my uncle asked my cousin why these things continually happened to him. And my cousin replied, and I'll paraphrase, he said, stuff happens. My, his dad, my uncle, responded, I understand stuff happens. What I don't understand is why you're always the first one on the scene. Repeatedly, my cousin did not heed warnings to be careful. Time and time again, he trusted so-called friends who turned out to be untrustworthy. Sadly, he didn't accept personal responsibility for the things that happened to him. He was always the victim. It was always someone else's fault. None, and he, and, not, and time and chance just happened to him. He was the perpetual victim. If we are to be prudent, that is, a wise decision maker, then we're to take the advice that we read in Proverbs 22, 3, foresee the problem before the problem affects us. We're to look carefully well to our going, as we, describe, as we read in Proverbs 14, 15. We're simply not to believe every statement of face value, but we're to evaluate what we hear and then make careful judgments. While we note in Ecclesiastes 9.11 that time and chance indeed happen to all, that is not an excuse for everything that happens to us. We're still personally responsible for our own actions. So let's follow the advice in Proverbs 14, 20, and 22 to be alert and aware to foresee potential problems, avoid those problems, and in so doing look well to our going. In the final analysis, we stand before the throne of God the Father in the day of our eternal judgment. We cannot say that time and chance caused all of the challenges in our lives. Rather, we must take personal responsibility to claim our destinies in the kingdom of God as promised to us by Jesus Christ.